Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Was that a great debate or not? Well, I don't know. It was great. But you know what? We had a debate and we had people who step up, people who step out, people who did the right thing. And then we had that guy who just made crazy statements. And unfortunately, I cannot remember what his name is. And good for us that we don't need to remember who this guy is that guy on the end that constantly talk about oh we want to be centrist and we want to be that and we want to be the other folks that's not who we are that's not who america is america is a progressive country who wants to have who wants to have equal access to success not equal outcomes but equal access to success and until 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 we get to that point in our society until we get to that point in our society forget it we won't be happy our happiness index you know what that is called the happiness index but we are going to have a, a great show for you today i want you to stay i mean because man it's full man or woman we have quite a bit to talk about we're going to first talk about well let me let me go ahead and finish queuing this baby up right here and as soon as I'm done queuing this baby up, which is almost all queued up, I think I got one more to do, but I can do that a little later. But here's the deal. Let me bring up uh, what the show is about. Today's the title of the show is, and it's coming up right now, Internet is Fast. We got lightning fast internet here. Dem debate. O'Donnell slams Dooch on Elizabeth Warren and build a movement 2020. We have an interview. So anyhow, three segments today. More exciting than expected Democratic debate, Lawrence O'Donnell checked Donny Douch's Douches or whatever his name is on Elizabeth Warren's diss. Paul Zeitz talks about his Build a Movement 2020. So the Democratic debate, intellectual dishonesty and movements, that's pretty much the three things we discussed. I enjoyed the debate much more than I thought I would. Elizabeth Warren exceeded my expectations. We should expect nothing from any politicians we should demand that they fulfill the words they articulate. Doing so with Warren or Sanders will be good for America. The second segment discusses the dissent. Some want to give Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell called out Donny Douch for his condescension. And the third segment, Build a Movement 2020, discusses the movement that covers from climate change to social justice to racial justice the criminal justice. So all together, folks, we have a very full show for you today. But before I get involved, I said every day, right now, the most important issue in my opinion, and I, I think likely in the opinion of most, is health care. And why? We all get sick. We're all, that is, that is the one boat. Health care. That is the one boat. No matter, no matter who you are, you are in that boat. And what's going on, my friends, is there is so much misinformation going out there. Good people. Good people are scared to death whenever they hear the word Medicare for all. Good people are concerned. Good people are saying, oh, my God, I'm scared of that thing. You know why they're saying that? Because they are being, the corporatocracy is seeing that America is starting to get a wind, that something is wrong, that they're being pilfered, that they're being ripped off, and they know something has to change. They don't know what. So when those of us who know what have to change start to tell you what has to change, they have to come in and they have to say, oh no, if you listen to those crazy progressives, and they, that's the first thing that they have to do, they have to make the progressive look like a whole bunch of nuts. 
if you listen to those crazy progressives, that there's that guy on the debate at the end. Oh, those crazy people want to get rid of 180 million people are going to lose their health insurance. And then the other one says, you know, those, uh, those union workers, they didn't get their pay, but they got good health care. And that's what they negotiated for. And they, they, tell, they create all these stories around why private insurance is good and why it is so disastrous if for some reason you lose basic private in- It's a lie. But America, we have to step out. How much longer do we need to be screwed? How much longer do we have to pay all our, our worth to these guys, to a few? How much more? What I ask all of us to do is math. I ask, I beg of us all to simply understand math. And this is a simple mathematical equation I want everybody to understand. Folks, please, if you're listening to this show right now, please share this show. This is very, very important. The first segment is about the debates. But before I get to the debates, I also need to score us up on Medicare for All, Healthcare for All. Because you are being lied to and you are asked to be dumb. You are asked to to be remain it to remain dumb you're asked to forget math that is what they are asking you to do when they tell you when those de- including those democrats yesterday ryan said it oh we don't want people to lose their health insurance nobody is losing their health insurance everybody will be getting better insurance at a more economical price at a price you can afford. And you know why it's, a, it's definitely a price you can afford? Because your insurance rate is no longer tagged to, uh, well, if it's a family of four, that family of four has to pay $17,000 a year. The company pay X amount and you pay. That is over with. Everybody pay on a gradation scale. In other words, if you make a little bit of money, everybody has, everybody is in. They talk about f- you want free health care. Healthcare is not free and we are not, Medicare for all is not proposing that we give you free healthcare. That's not what it is. You know when it's free, you get a card. You get a card and you go in to see your doctor and you walk out of there. If you are sick, you get a card. I mean, you always have your card. You go see a doctor, you go see your lab test, whatever. You come out of there paying nothing. But here's the thing. It's not really free at all because we all, everybody who works, everybody who has an income will pay into the general fund and out of that general fund is health care. So it's not free, oh, we want something for free. That's not what it is, people. What it is, is for once. Healthcare as a right means we all contribute, and those who make the most, those who society has given the most to, and by the way, if you follow up any one of my show, do not feel sorry when we say the wealthy will pay a lot more. Do not feel sorry, because remember, all the money that the wealthy makes is on your back. When Bezos has $160 billion, if I could get you, everybody to understand their worth, their worth in what, the, in, in, in what the billionaire was able to make, if I can get folks to understand that the billionaire's money is the money that they denied you, when Bezos makes $160 billion, it's because the people who work for Bezos did not get the maximum salary they could have been afforded to get. So never feel that when, when the argument that, well, you want the rich to, you are telling the rich that they have to pay more than anybody else. Yes, I am. And that is because our economic system by design, our economic system by design makes you work for less to make others be afforded more. So therefore, when it comes to taking care of society as a whole, we ask them to pay more. Medicare for all, we all pay for it. We all have skin in the game. We all do. What we won't allow anymore is for the vast majority of people who are paying so much into health care and getting so little. Yes, yesterday or a few days ago, there's this guy comes on TV. He says, I have a $7,000 deductible. I'm paying $1,400 a month for health care. And I cannot use my health care because I go to the doctor until I reach $7,000 in deductible, I have to pay out of pocket. I'm paying $1,400 a month. I'm paying $7,000 in, in deductible for each of the family members. And I still can't afford it. Obamacare was no solution. Well, Obamacare helped. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to say, folks, is 
we are in shambles and the money is there. And here's a math problem that they want you to forget. And I'll be repeating this over and over again because on TV, don't and, and, and those that listen to me and, and I've heard this before, stay with me. We have a lot more to cover. But I want to tell you this. A lot of you are going to say, Egbert, I'm tired of hearing you talk about Medicare like that. Well, you know why I have to? Because every time I turn the TV on, I see that they, they, that organization uh, for the partnership, the partnership for the Amer American uh, Healthcare, that is a false organization that is designed to lie to people about of Medicare for All. And every day, I see commercials throughout the day. I see advertising throughout the day that's telling people, look, folks, uh, Medicare for all is going to make you wait for health care. Medicare for all is going to deny you service. Medicare, for, I continuously hear all these lies. So I have to be, every time people turn this video on, every time they see politics done right, somewhere within politics done right, we have to continue that message to counteract what the, the wealthy is doing by putting those ads out. So folks... Mathematically speaking, Medicare for all is less expensive. We spend more money on health care, and the reason why we spend more money on health care is off the top 20-something percent of the money that, we, that you give in premiums go to rich people, the people who own the insurance companies, the people who own the, the drug companies. That goes off the top. Medicare for all mitigates much. The first thing we get rid of, of course, is mandatory private health insurance. Here's the deal. If you want private health insurance, you can have it. But here's how it works. We have a basic set of health care, the, 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 what they call the pool of people. The pool of people is the country. Therefore, the risk pool is much smaller. I mean, the risk is much smaller, so the rates go down for everybody. Secondly, they have been telling you, oh, hospitals will close if we pay the rates that Medicare pay. And they're, they're, they're not lying to you. If, if hospitals had to collect just the, med, the current Medicare rate, all hospitals would really close. But that's not what it is. Medicare for all is not the Medicare of today that pays a, substanti a substandard level to hospitals or a substandard level to doctors. That is where we have to divert. Sometimes I wonder, maybe we should just call it health care for all. That's not going to pay Medicare rates. That's going to pay affordable rates to hospitals such that, uh, that, uh, that an aspirin, but we're not going to pay $10 for an aspirin. We're not going to pay $1,000 for a test that costs $10. None of that. Because remember, when you pay those kinds of fees, that's not what the product costs. That is the profit that you are given to a few Americans, a very thin slice of Americans are getting that. So folks, don't be fooled. We need you to share this. We need you to push Medicare for all. And we need you not to accept the lies. Remember, they are fighting this hard. They are fighting this hard because they are. you are about to take away the free money. You are about to take away those people who have been t stealing your money. You are about to take away the money from the people who have been for in you and of course they're going to fight hard of course they're going to lie to you of course they're going to ask you to deny math math says the following if we no longer have shareholders to pay if we no longer have executives to pay to pay uh, that to pay money to pay a bill then we'd have no problems okay folks on the debate look i get very excited about the medicare fraud because i am so upset that we have allowed the thievery that we have allowed the thuggishness of the corporations to last this long. And they, they, they do that by manipulating our minds. M my goal here, I've given up what I've given up to beg, to beg that we no longer allow those who have a vested interest to steal from you, to continue stealing from you. And the amount that they steal from you is horrendous. If you doubt it, every year your health insurance go up. Insurance has not gone up that much. Ask yourself why, people. Because they, want to, uh, they, they constantly want a bigger return on their investment. And it eats itself. That is what our economic system does. It eats itself, folks. It eats itself. So please, please share these things. And please express in your own words to your family, to your friends, what we've learned together of how the thievery works. Please. 
the mainstream media is not going to do it for us because they want the money from the drug companies advertising. They want the money from the hospitals advertising. They want the money from the health insurance companies that are advertising. We have to do this on our own. We have to take responsibility. We have to be the ones who defend ourselves, the average American person, the independent media. We, we have to do it ourselves. It's time for us to stop depending on some outside source to do it for us. We are going to have to take control. We are going to have to elect the people that have our interests at hand. Now, with the debate yesterday, we had a debate. And of that debate yesterday, we had a, a great, great debate uh, with, uh, well, not a great debate, but we had um, Elizabeth Warren, I think, came out with her policy or constant ready with a policy and complete answers that she had to have. I think she excelled. I also think that Castro did very well. Uh, I, I, wish, I, I wish Beto O'Rourke would run for Senate. He's not, he's not up to speed technically with all the issues uh, a president uh, would, would want. I mean, uh, he, he, he just isn't there. He's a, uh, he's a good guy. He means well, and, but he's, he's just not there. Uh, Bill de Blasio, I love Bill de Blasio, but I always did. Bill de Blasio is a true progressive and understand that most Americans are progressive, that they've just been taught that progressivicity is something that they can't attain, which we know it's not true. We can get there. But to get there, we have to stop the indoctrination. Uh, the other person that I thought excelled, well, Cory Booker, Cory Booker was a very good actor. But Cory Booker, do remember that Cory Booker is the one who uh, voted also to stop bringing in the drugs from Canada and a few other things. So I, I consider Cory a corporatist. Um, uh, like I said, Castro and, uh, and uh, Inslee, of course, Inslee with the environment. It's just that Inslee is almost like a one-stop pony. I'm coming to you uh, soon on the phone. Uh, let's see how much time I have. Boy, I, I've taken a lot of time, and that other thing takes 27 minutes. I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll take the call real quick, but I can't stay long on the call because we have a whole lot of other things to cover. So come on in, caller. Hello? Yes, you're in, caller. Real quick because Hello? we have to get to another subject. You're on. Berto, uh, how are you? Uh, this is Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Real, how you doing, my friend? Hello? Talk to me. I'm doing pretty well. I just wanted to make two quick points. Yes. Um, last night during the debate, during the debate um, one, it was really interesting. One of the, uh, I forget who, who exactly said it. But we always hear this point about how private companies do a better job than the government it's not true. at certain things. And last night someone was talking about Medicare, and they said that uh, basically Medicare is doing a really good job because it only has 2% overhead, overhead costs, exactly. whereas, whereas private insurance has 15 to 20% overhead costs. Right. That so is that right there, one, it covers that's – that's a huge deal because, again, you know uh, – you know, the claim is, is that the government does a poor job. Johnny, you're absolutely right about that. Job. Johnny, you're absolutely right about that. I've been preaching that for a long time. And the reason why the overhead for the private company is so much is we have, everybody have their own computer system. Everybody are paying executives some ridiculous prices. They have to pay their shareholders. Exactly. They have to do all those things. Uh, they're asking Americans to not understand math. That's what they're doing. Tell me your second point, Johnny, because I have another 30-minute. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and, then, and then my second point, my second point was, and this is where I felt like they failed last night during the debate. Uh -huh. uh, the question was asked, what's the biggest problem facing America? Right. And basically they started talking about climate change, the Russians, and my thing was, why didn't they just simply say income inequality? You know something, Johnny? Uh, I think uh, they should have said that, but you know how, how it goes sometimes. But you're right. Johnny, well, thank yeah, you. It, I, it's about it's all about the middle class. If you, you don't have a strong middle class, we don't have America. Brother, you are you know you. you That's know, what makes America great, the brother, middle class. You know, you know, I'm with you. Okay, gotta go, Johnny, because we have a long show Thank and you. a whole lot to cover. Thank one. you so kindly for calling, brother. Okay, folks. <laughs> I, I, so we, so that, that, that's all I'm going to say about the debate because I got to go. I have a five-minute piece here that I want you to hear uh, about uh, how these guys try to corrupt the progress, not only the cr progressive base, but they try to inf in, uh, impose their thought process on you. So here's how it goes. Listen to this. Purported progressive Donny Deutsch. Uh, he's always on Morning Joe. Not only is he always on Morning Joe, MSNBC just gave him a show recently. Here is the deal. This is the same guy who went on Morning Joe and said, you know what, if the Democrats elect a socialist like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, I will vote for Donald Trump. That is what a purported progressive actually said until uh, 
Joe Scarborough looked at him and said, no, 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 you wouldn't. No, 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 you wouldn't. And then he started to backtrack. But here's the reality now. He's on this kick saying that Elizabeth Warren cannot beat Donald Trump. He's on a kick that's saying uh, Bernie Sanders cannot beat Donald Trump. I mean, even Joe Scarborough pointed out that Bernie Sanders could beat Donald Trump. Elizabeth Warren could beat Donald Trump. Here's the deal. Joe Biden is not electable, and I showed several times how they are going to go against Joe Biden. First of all, Joe Biden have some women issues, not like uh, Donald Trump. His is more on a chauvinistic basis, but they will show it with him touching women and all of that as if, oh my God, we have the president grabbing on women. We also have Joe Biden grabbing on women. That's how they're going to portray it. Do we also have the issues with racial uh, problem? They, we know that Donald Trump is a racist. They will make Joe Biden a racist when they talk about him being with segregationists and uh, be, not being called a boy but a son. They have this stuff about him, uh, the dog whistles that he put out there, of talking about Obama being an articulate guy. They have him being against busing. They're, they will make Joe Biden, as far as morality, racial justice, and sexism and misogyny, they will equalize that with Donald Trump. That will, is what their marketing department will successfully do. And at that point then, they will bring in plagiarism of, 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 of Biden's past with Donald Trump and his lies. So they will equalize all these issues together. Now, what, it, what irks is to watch them give a lot of play to Donny Deutsch, who's going to come on TV and constantly try to tell progressives, oh, Elizabeth Warren, what she's saying is wonderful, it is great but she cannot win against Donald Trump. You watched her last night, and I saw somebody who can go toe to toe with Donald Trump. And I have no problem seeing a woman there. Thank you, Lawrence O'Donnell. Lawrence O'Donnell simply shut Donny Deutsch up with his pre preposterous uh, articulations. And check this out. You still stand by your uh, now widely quoted prediction? My issue, unfortunately, and do not shoot the messenger, is the messenger. I do not believe Elizabeth Warren on stage with Donald Trump beats him. And I also think when you can label somebody a socialist, 57% of this country thinks that word is un-American. I'm not saying it's fair. When he can blanket Elizabeth Warren as a socialist and he's on stage with her, the Democrats lose. I think she's delightful. I think she's wonderful. I, I, I'm a big fan. I just don't think she has what it takes to beat this president the same way at least an idealized version of Joe Biden is. I'm just, don't shoot the messenger. It's just facts. We gotta get Trump out. Let's just uh, identify this for what it is and then we have that pure guesswork a year and a half away from absolutely the uh and so it has and i say this respectfully zero value and it's you know what i guess you're in that it's the same thing that you would buy me in a similar don't tell way. me it has zero value. Have zero value don't tell me it has zero value it's it understanding does. human behavior it's a guess it's, it's a it, wild guess Donnie. it's not it's a, it's understanding human behavior and no, i guarantee you 90 no, percent of our it's a wild guess there's no science in it there's nothing there's no science in it and no one can make it you can put any name you want in the wild guess that you just made and it doesn't make it I'm true. understanding what Donald Trump, the way he connects with this country and the strength he exudes. We need to exude a stronger strength. It's this not is, a This is the discussion. pure guesswork section of the discussion. This, this is the pure guess. That is a pure guest work section of the discussion. I mean... I sit down and I listen to that and I listen to that and I listen to that over and over again and I'm, it is like what Donny Deutsch is trying to do is exactly what they, what they did back in 2016. You, you have to stop trying to force feed people to the American people. Let the American people decide who they think have the values, who they decide have the policies that they want. Don't, don't try to do Otherwise, and, and Deutsch also shows that he's a damn sexist, okay? Because uh, the way he talk about, uh, oh, uh, the, the president with strength. So what if you have strength if you're a darn fool? What if you have strength if you're dumb? What if you have strength of all these things? And then isn't strength about intellect as well? Is it strength about, I mean, look, it is, that was simply a ridiculous statement from Donny Deutsch. But you know how it goes. But what we at independent media have to do is that independent media we're going to be out there telling you the truth we're going to be out there putting a, not a spin on it but putting the fact-based truth on it we're going to go to uh, i have an interview that i did 
with uh, Dr. Paul Zeitz. Dr. Paul Zeitz has started a new movement, um, and he's going to discuss that movement. But just before we go to that movement, I need to do my regular spill real quickly, and then we'll be into that. I'd like to remind you that this is a progressive show that needs your support, so please go to uh, patreon.com slash politics done right patreon.com slash politics done right anybody who subscribed to our program which starts at, a, at a, as low as 199 uh, gets full access to all my books uh, as I see it class warfare the only resort to right wing doom is uh, is my first book and my god it still applies and it still shows all the issues with the economy etc etc all these things still hold value and of course I'm currently writing uh, how to make America utopia take take uh, away the economy from those who rigged it. That book, I'm on chapter four, and as I write chapters, I put it online immediately. So please go to patreon.com slash politics and write. If you want to support this network, folks, please remember, uh, there are three ways, or there are four ways, actually, because we also have a GoFundMe for new equipment. But please go ahead and go to patreon.com slash politics done right to subscribe. To donate, just go to politics done right dot com slash donate. And to shop where you can get uh, some of our cups and all of that, go to store.politicsdoneright.com. Store.politicsdoneright.com. And that, there you can get our, guess what, our politics done right uh, teacup. And you can get our politics done right t shirts and all those other things. I'm asking you. To do that, uh, do that to support. Here's what the cup looks like. I didn't have that on screen. This is what our cup looks like. And um, it's pretty cool with T-shirts, all that good stuff. So check it out. Go to store.politicsandright.com. But anyhow, without further ado, because this is, a, this is not too short of a um, play, I want to go ahead and uh, play you the, the interview that we did earlier this morning with Dr. Paul, uh, Paul Zeitz. And I think that it is great that our movements are moving on. So here it goes. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I'm here with Dr. Paul Zietz. He's with Build a Movement 2020. Actually, I think he's the founder of Build a Movement 2020. Am I correct, Dr. Zietz? Yes, Egberto. Uh, my name, yes, I'm the founder of Build a Movement 2020. It's a call to action uh, where we're calling on stakeholders across the country to join forces. Within the Democratic Party, we have to unify, also with independents, Green Republicans, and those non-voting Americans to work together to usher forth a more just and peaceful world. No, I like to I like to shock my guests every now and then and say, but sir, who are you? Tell me something about yourself. I'm a 57-year-old father of five sons. I'm a physician by training, and I'm a, a political activist. I've been working on waging justice for the last 30 years, and I've been able to broker and be part of bipartisan coalitions that have changed the direction of humanity. So in the 1990s and 2000s, I worked on the global AIDS crisis, and there were literally millions of people dying every year around the world from AIDS. And we were able to broker a political movement from the far left to the far right. And we got uh, political leaders like President Bush and then President Obama to commit billions of dollars and massive programs to stop the dying. And it's that experience that I would like to bring forward for these other challenges that are and facing us today's humanity, which is the climate emergency. Now, uh, you, what department did you work for in the government at the time that you did that? Yeah, so I worked uh, in the Department of State. I was the director of the Data Revolution for Sustainable Development team uh, during the Obama administration, and I stayed on for a few months during the Trump administration. Oh, so you, uh, even recently you were still in the government? For the, yeah, until uh, August of 2017. August of 2017. Now, um, what what was that, the genesis of you forming this group, the Build a Movement 2020? And how exactly do you expect, with all the groups that are out there that are coming up and springing up about the environment and springing up about other issues, how do you intend to get, first of all, what do you intend to do specifically, and how do you intend to get that notoriety that is necessary to get some sort of attraction within the body politic? So I think my motivation is that 
the politics that we've seen in the past have failed to bring forward the kind of transformation that many, many people believe we need. We need to bring forward economic, social, and environmental justice. And we have to do that by creating a, an agenda for action that can connect people across uh, the cacophony of organizational perspectives and even the 25 Democratic candidates. How do we unify the party when everyone's fighting after each other? So we as citizens have to call on our leaders to unify. And we have to also partner with Green Republicans and with independents and with non-voting Americans and inspire them and motivate them to step forward because I believe that we're in an existential moment for the future of humanity. The climate emergency is so severe that if we don't take bold and transformative action immediately, then the threat that is upon us will threaten the existence of future generations. So we may not have a human species by the end of this century. I am very happy that you're using the term climate emergency, which is what, where we're at right now. And the other thing that I'm happy to hear you talk about is uh, not unifying, not capitulating or anything, but realizing the rea having the reality, knowing the reality that we have to work with everybody. Does not just us. For those, I don't know where you stand, but politically, I'm I'm pretty much to the left. But I understand that we have to meet somewhere with everybody of all sides. And I, I'm very happy to hear you say that. Now, in in saying that, right now we have a we are in a point within our society that it's next to impossible to work with the current crop of Republican politicians. Note I'm saying politician, not people. With the Republican politicians. How do you break the back of the relationship between the Republican politician and the Republican, the good Republican people who uh, you probably need to bring into a build a movement 2020 uh, move, uh, movement to get something, uh, get the traction necessary to move forward. So let's let's focus on the climate emergency as an example of how we're. I'd like to propose that we all work together to respond, which is that it, it's the media narrative out there is that there's this kind of uh, us versus them. Right. And it's like, they're, we're right and they're wrong. And in reality, I have been working on Capitol Hill, and I've been working with Republican members of Congress and their staff, with Republican lobbyists. Guess what? They have children, and they have uh, a desire to have grandchildren, and they understand the threat of the climate emergency. But if you look at the regular media, you would know that there's actually many Republicans that are aligned the agenda that you and I share. I exactly. I want so, to stop you there a second, Paul. There's no, there are a group of climate denialists right. uh, that are, include the president and a few of his cronies. I'm not talking about that. Now, the, 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 what, I, what I want to stress, however, or what I want to get how you intend to do it specifically is you're right. The, the, the Iowa forms are underwater. Uh, forms all over the country that has they have never been flooded before. We have only 70% of the crops planted right now because the fields are too wet to do anything with. These guys see it, and most of these guys are likely Republicans. So they know it. They're, they are ill-served by their leaders. You are a leader in, in, the, in the process of tr as, a, as an activist trying to make a difference. How do you, uh, this, this program is going to be seen not only by a whole bunch of Democrats, not by a whole bunch of left-wingers, it will also be seen by uh, Republicans who are trying to reach out, regular people, but they want to see that the activist community as well uh, is going to take them, take them more seriously than just Trumpist. Right. So I'm part of uh, building this kind of centrist coalition that crosses the political boundary. And, and we're walking a tightrope. We want to walk a tightrope and we want to come up with practical solutions. And we're working in solidarity with the Citizens Climate Lobby, with Earth Day Network, with a wide 
range of groups, faith-based groups, that all believe that we, we can broker a bipartisan coalition and get the kind of solutions and action that we need from our federal government. Uh, we can't do it as our left alone. It will never work. Right. Um, and so we have to uh, create a movement framework that says we want to achieve climate restoration. We want to restore a safe and healthy climate for future generations. No one is talking about that yet. Everyone's talking about mitigation and uh, transitioning to renewable, which is critically important. And we're you know, hearing people talk about adaptation. How do we deal with the rising fees? Now, that is a dangerous, that is dangerous. When you start talking about adaptation, that's dangerous because that is almost co allowing the continuance of laissez-faire uh, in, in the way we, we, we work with the environment, etc. Now, I want to make a few mentions, first of all, to some of our more. Uh, there, I have a, a particular segment of my audience that uh, when they hear the words centrist, they go into a pissy fit. And in a lot of times, justifiably so. Because centrism have done very little for neither Republicans or Democrats for that matter. Uh, but in the case of climate change, where we all share the same planet, we share the all spaces, uh, we have to find some sort of, of a methodology to do so. And again, that's one of the reasons that, again, that I said I, I was happy to have you on. I'm also happy to hear you say that you are willing to go and work with just about everybody because I think some of us have to learn not to give up on necessarily our values, but at the same time, not to disregard those of others. So, um, uh, so, so, so I appreciate uh, what you're doing. I, I want to kind of switch a little bit here on this. And, you, and, and by the way, let me tell you how I, I do these things. Whatever I forget, do not, or didn't ask you, I want you to then tell me Egberto, but I wanted to say this as well. But I want to move on to something else, and later on you can tell me, hey, I want to get this out as well. Okay. Uh, now, um, what did you think about the debate? Was uh, the environment covered enough? And of, of those that were on stage, did, did anybody make more sense than the other? The debate last night uh, was the first uh, that we've seen in the Democratic Party. There were nine minutes out of 120 minutes spent on the climate emergency. Wow. That is wholly inadequate. Right. For the nature of this emergency and the state of the crisis, I agree with the stakeholders and activists that are calling for a dedicated debate, a two hour debate just on the climate emergency, so that we can really get into the issues. We heard uh, four out of the 10 candidates declare that climate change was the largest geopolitical threat uh, facing our country. That happened at the end of the debate. Uh, Jay Inslee said Donald Trump, and he's also focusing on uh, the climate. So I would say five out of the 10 understand the magnitude of the crisis. I think that uh, Jay Inslee, the governor of Washington State, has put forward the most ambitious climate uh, action plan that includes climate restoration and mitigation and adaptation. And we have to do all three. The crisis is already unfolding, and so we have to adapt to it now while we're preventing it from worsening and while we're working to restore the climate. I believe that these are three legs of the tool of climate action. We need to do all three at the same time. Yeah, I think I think that's that's imperative, right? Now, uh, do you expect do, uh, do you expect this second debate to be any better? I think it's going to be an exciting debate tonight. Um, I do think climate will come up again. I think there are bigger differences between uh, the candidates tonight. Like we'll hear uh, Senator Bi uh, Vice President Biden's perspective. He has put forward a climate plan uh, that is bolder than what was achieved under the Obama administration. Uh, but we're also going to see more progressive and more uh, dynamic. Uh, recommendations from people like Bernie Sanders and others. So it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's <laughs> I was talking to somebody last night at a watch party saying it is great to have uh, this many choices between this many good people. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's, it's just a blessing to have 
uh, this kind of an in, in intellectual discussion. But yes, I was disappointed that we didn't speak more about the, uh, the climate, that we didn't speak more about a whole lot of issues. Now, uh, your bill... Can I respond more to your last point? Because uh, yes. one of the responses that I had was, wow, these are all amazing people. Yes. Uh, I really could see them working together as part of the cabinet for the next president and that they would bring their experiences and their intellectual capacities to bear. And last night's group and tonight's group working together, we could have a serious government that was taking on serious transformation to address the climate emergency and other crises. So I, I was actually really hopeful by the caliber of the, the whole community of the Democratic candidates. It is amazing that you said that because as we were watching the uh, debate last night in a group of us, uh, we sat down and we watched the debate. Uh, we, we, we looked at a particular person and said, environmental secretary, right. vice president. And, right. and we, we started naming these different people out there. And it's like, uh, we don't necessarily want to see you as the president, but we definitely want to see you in that cabinet because that these are the caliber of people Right. They want serving us in politics. So it's, it's amazing that you thought something similar as well. Yeah, I was uh, doing that too. I was <laughs> <laughs> but um, moving on, uh, let, I tell you what, I'm going to break here and ask you to tell me what else you want to put out there in the ethos. Well, I believe that uh, I would like to just talk about uh, how do we mobilize our political action right now to focus exclusively on the climate emergency? How do we call on all of these Democratic candidates to unify going into the general election? How do we uh, hold them accountable for breaking the log jam of the fossil fuel industry? We heard some concrete proposals last night about a carbon tax. We have heard concrete proposals about divesting from fossil fuels and transitioning to a clean, renewable energy economy. I think every American, every one of your listeners can take action and prepare for the transition that we all are going to have to take. I think we have to take responsibility for our own lack of action. We've been complicit and complacent and not holding ourselves accountable for our own behavior. Each one of us is a, a carbon emitter, and Americans uh, emit more carbon dioxide per person than any other person on the planet. So we can blame the president, or we can blame this one or that one, but we all have to look at the mirror and look at how we're going to change and how we're going to hold ourselves accountable for bringing forward a clean and safe environment for ourselves and for future generations. Now, um, this is going to be a bit off uh, topic uh, because, I, I mean, I, I'm a, a, a full-time political activist as well, uh, but I don't only cover climate issues, but I cover many of the other social justice issues, criminal justice issues, racial justice issues. I don't know if, if, that is a, if somehow that is going to be, be a part of the movement that you are, uh, that you are building. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have uh, an agenda for social, economic, racial, gender, and environmental justice. Um, and we have time down measurable goals and targets that can be achieved across these areas. And racial justice is a central priority. I believe the next president should issue the second emancipation proclamation. We should do a mass, a mass emancipation of all nonviolent offenders. And we need a massive program to be set up on day one that will allow these families to be reunited for uh, there to be uh, economic and job opportunities in housing for the people that have been uh, wrongly incarcerated. Uh, this, is a, this is a huge moment of opportunity for healing uh, for these families that have been destroyed by our criminal justice rules. So why don't we hear about anyone calling for a mass emancipation? Where's the plan for mass emancipation? Wow. I mean, I have not, that, that is, that's profound. Tell me a little bit more. How would that work? Well, I think that uh, we're, we have to demand that the candidates set a goal. 
and and set and develop a plan to implement a bold and transformational goal. We have to ask them to do something by when. So I would say in the first hundred days, implement a mass emancipation plan. Uh, do a proclamation and then implement a plan. You have to do it at the federal level. So there are federal rules and uh, statutes that have to be transformed. And then you have to mobilize uh, action at the state level. You need to create an emergency fund. You can get emergency supplemental funding to uh, invest in these uh, transition programs. Because you can't just release people without providing them with support, with psychological support for the reintegration with their families, community building, as well as jobs, housing, education, and healthcare. We can do that. Uh, we know how to do these kind of programs, and we just need a leader that will have the vision to declare an emancipation and implement the transition to freedom Hi. for our brothers and sisters. I love that concept. I love that concept. And what's, what are your thoughts on healthcare? On healthcare, I believe that we need to move into a Medicare for All program as fast as possible. Every other developed country on the planet has a universal health package where every uh, person in the country has access to high quality, basic primary health care. And then if there are private insurers, people can buy in additional uh, private insurance as a supplement. But we have to have a basic package, health is a human right for all people. I mean, in America, we spend more money per capita and we have worse outcomes. Life expectancy in our country is going down. We have we have an obesity pandemic. We have a drug abuse pandemic. You know, Americans are miserable, and uh, we have, we can use the existing resources more effectively to create wellness, happiness, joy, and and create a healthy way of living, uh, so that all Americans can enjoy life and contribute to our broader society. So uh, Medicare for all is absolutely a top priority. Child care and family leave? I'm really excited about Elizabeth Warren's universal child care program. I felt like she articulated the best plan that I've seen in terms of uh, ensuring universal access to child care. I mean, if we're expecting people to go to school and to work while they're having a family, then we need to provide affordable child care. Uh, that is a huge uh, priority, and she identified a, a plan that I think is plausible and viable and fundable uh, that can enable all people to have uh, locally determined uh, child care options uh, where targeting the lowest income families so that they get the benefit uh, that they need and the support that they need. I this mean, is I think a critical step for um, releasing people from the cycle of poverty. Right. You know, I've been really uh, struck by the level of poverty. You know, we're, we hear the president talk about America's great, the economy is the best that it's ever been. I've been in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and cities around the United States where 25% of Americans are in urban centers are living below the poverty line. The uh, education systems are completely collapsed. There's no jobs for our young people. This is not making America great again. We need economic opportunity for all Americans we need to revitalize our inner cities and give people education and a job training opportunities so that they can contribute to the new green economy. Let me tell you something, Dr. Zietz. Um, there's a simple, I'm an engineer by training, a political activist later, later in my life when I decided that something had to be done. Um, interestingly, uh, what we're seeing here is not by accident. What we're seeing here is not, it's a, it's a mathematical formula, right? If, if, uh, if the wealthy grows at 7, 8, 9, 10 percent, while the economy grows at 2 percent, it means that they're constantly always taken away from the rest, right? That's, that's a mathematical equation. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you can't get around it. And the manifestation of, about that is that you see the economy doing very well, you see, ca you, you see capital growing, you see all those things growing, but disparity means that only a few get it, and when you look down, like you said, you're in Baltimore, Philly, LA, and all in, in LA, 
the homelessness is is going is ridiculously high because the prices of uh, the prices of real estate's going up because there are few people playing playing chess with it. But that said, we know why these things are happening. Programs like what you are doing, Build a Movement 2020, that takes this entire economic system in a comprehensive manner. I think it's what's necessary, and I've been trying to give exposure to every piece of group, every group that is trying to make a difference because it's not going to be just build a movement 2020. It will be a whole, it will be Coffee Party USA, it will be a Move to Amend, it will be all these other organizations that, that are working separately and together to go ahead and make this change because this is a huge country with a huge problem. So I, I support Move to Amend and I've been tracking the Coffee Party and you know, we have Indivisible, we have Move On, we have this, we have that. Right. Can we create a moment now in the 2020 election where we create a movement where we align everyone together? Exactly. Can we mean a forum where we come up with a joint platform, an umbrella platform for a unified movement? Because I'm afraid with all this kind of scatter, we have 25 candidates, we have uh, thousands of groups that don't get along, don't work right. and we're going to be left with a divided kind of constituency that without a clear focus. So I, I believe that uh, we need to find a way to build a movement and work together. I don't know how to do that exactly, but I think uh, you're, you know, maybe people in your listenership can start uh, in creating a forum locally to challenge all the groups to work together. Well, I tell you what, uh, Dr. Zeitz, one of, the, or Zietz, one of the things that I say all the time, and, and move a little bit over, I think you're moving over to the, yeah, there you go. Um, one, one of the things that I try to push here is that, you know, I'm mostly progressive, I, I am a very progressive person, actually, and what I try to do is I try to tell folks, it doesn't matter who the group is, whether I agree with all your points or not, I am going to be working with that group. And I'm trying to do that leading by example. What I mean by that is I don't necessarily agree with all the things these different groups are doing, but all of them have a platform and their platform have some, some intersectionality and we are going to work with it. And as far as politics done right is concerned, we'll make sure that all these groups get exposure and all these groups are encouraged to uh, to to work together for exactly what you're talking about, not look like a whole bunch of scattered islands in their own fiefdoms, but working to realize that we're working on a common goal. And you have a great name, Build a Movement for 2020. I mean, that is a great call call, uh, call to action right there. So maybe you should get into uh, <laughs> doing some more uniting of these other groups as well. Yeah, and so we are doing that. We are working like in the climate restoration area. We're working with stakeholders to build that movement. We're working with the youth networks, the faith networks, the climate groups, the citizen climate lobby, and trying to an Earth Day network, and a whole range of stakeholders to agree on bringing forward that agenda. Similarly, on the other areas of growing our democracy and then the other topics that we did talk about, it's, a, it's an effort underway to unite and unify and the call on our political leaders to unify. I, ne I didn't hear one of the candidates last night talk about how can we unify our party? How can we unify and mobilize people uh, who are independent? Or how do we mobilize the 50% of eligible voters who are non-voting? No one talked about how to build out from uh, with our current state. And we, we're losing. We, we keep losing politically. So when are we going to figure out a way to transcend this kind of divided, kind of limited uh, outreach and unify and expand our network? Absolutely. So, well, um, why don't you uh, give me, Dr. Zit, a closer here because we're right up on our break time here. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Please check out my website, drpaulzeitz.org, D-R-P-A-U-L-D-E-I-T-Z. -E and please join the movement. Let's work together. Please send me your ideas and let's collaborate and unify. And let's win big in 2020. 
Dr. Paul Zietz of Build a Movement 2020. Thank you so kindly for having been on Politics Done Right. And we will meet again, my friend. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, I, I think uh, there, there's much to do there. Um, we are near the end of the show. So what I want to do is one more time do a call out on Medicare for All. As I said, politics, one of the politics done right, most important uh, uh, reasons to be right now is to make sure that the, the, the lies that are going to be put out there for Medicare for All are not left unanswered. You're going to see a whole lot of stories over the next few months up until the election trying to tell you folks that all those candidates who want Medicare for All want to take away your insurance. Uh, remember, all those candidates that are pushing Medicare for All want to make sure that when you are sick, when your family is sick, that you can immediately be seen, that you, don't any, that you won't ever again have to worry about bankruptcy, that you won't ever again have to worry about substandard health care or no health care. That is what we stand for. Medicare for all is the only mathematical solution. Again, I repeat this absolutely. I would bet a finger on it and more. Medicare for all, mathematically speaking, is much more efficient, much better than anything any private insurance can do. Because remember, private insurance is not there to solve your problem. It is there to make a profit for a few. And there's nothing wrong with profit. It's just that our entire market does not have to be profit-based, nor is it more efficient that our entire market be profit-based. The idea that healthcare belong in the markets is, uh, to, to, is the best that I can say is evil. Because we shouldn't say you can only be cured if you're healthy, or rather if you have money. You can only be cured under these things. Folks, we're coming to the end of the show, and I want to do one last shout-out. Please remember to go to patreon.com slash politicsdoneright to, uh, to, log, to, to uh, subscribe to our show, or go to politicsdoneright.com slash donate to give a contribution to the show to make sure we can continue doing this, or go to store.politicsdoneright.com. Dot com. And of course, if you go to store.politicsdoneright.com, you have access to, guess what, our new cup, our new cup, as well as our t-shirts and all the other goodies. And uh, those people who subscribe to Politics Done Right get full access to all of the books that I write. As I see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. We also have uh, this other book called uh, How to Make America Utopia. Take away the economy from those who rigged it. I'm on chapter four. As I write a chapter, I put it online and you can read it before anybody else. Anybody who give me ideas for this book that get into the book, I will d definitely name you as a contributor to the book. I want to tell you guys another little quick story. I, 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 a few years ago, I got blood pressure that could have killed me. And what I had to do is change the way I lived. And that was to lose weight and also to do exercise and to do a few other things. I explained uh, all my dilemma through Lose Weight and Be Fit Now, and I decided to turn it into a book so that I could sell it, so that I could help, uh, with the, help with doing what we're doing here. In other words, all my books are here to subsidize politics done right. Everything that I sell is here to subsidize politics done right. So I kindly ask you to either go to store.politicsdoneright.com, go to uh, politicsdoneright.com slash donate to contribute to the, to the show, or subscribe. What we need is we need hundreds of subscribers, So we'd, and it's very inexpensive. We'd love for you to go to uh, patreon.com slash politicsdoneright.com, and that's right there on the screen right now, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash politics done right. Look, folks, we are at the end of the show. I want to thank you so kindly. I want to thank you so kindly for being a part of Politics Done Right. I want to thank you so kindly for spending this time with me. I want to thank you so kindly for what we are, that what we must do. Uh, we are going to be in Philadelphia uh, in, in a couple of weeks at the Netroots Convention. Actually, today's Thursday, so today would be the first day in two weeks of Netroots Nation. It's the largest, it's the largest progressive gathering of bloggers, politicians, so all Elizabeth Warren and all these politicians are going to be out there and we're going to drag them, Ocasio-Cortez and all these folks are going to be out there and we'll all be talking, we'll all be interviewing 
and I'll be bringing that to you. Those of you who uh, subscribe to politics to, to Patreon to Politics and Right via patreoncom right I'll make sure to have some goodies for you that you get first or that nobody else gets. Just to say thank you so kindly for supporting something that is important. And that today on on one of uh, my Facebook pages, a person wrote. Um, I was said a, a friend of mine said on on the page. I was uh, a nicely good good for her. She's a contributor to politics and right. But she said on the show, um, she said I was just listening to NPR and the only thing they said about the debate about it was about Elizabeth Warren and the things that they said is that uh, Eli- that about a, some kind of a, a mishap that got on there. But the other thing they talk about is Elizabeth Warren not mentioning uh, the University of Houston. Why am I saying this? The things that these other stations are concentrating about NPR should be in the skin about. Medicare for all, and really, when Elizabeth Warren comes out and says, "I uh, I don't mind getting rid of of um, private insurance," they should be analyzing all of that. If they were to analyze her statement, if they were to analyze people who said, "Get rid of private insurance and let's have uh, uh, healthcare outside of the commons," we could have a real discussion, a math-based discussion. But our media is on the take as well. That's why you have progressive media like Politics Done Right. Folks, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. It goes like this. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S that is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three.